for them to begin to review some of the motions that we talked about, which are the ones that are to joints or ones that are non axial. <coughs> They're just sliding against each other. They're not moving in a certain plane. And then you have uniaxial. Those are movements in one plane. And what would be an example of those types of joints? Hinge joints, right? The uh, ulnohumeral. And then also the radiohumeral can be rotation like that. And then biaxial would be moving in two planes. So that would be something like this, right? But in carpal flexion, we've got flexion extension, and the adduction, but there's no rotation. Or the radial carpal joints, okay? I can't rotate my wrist this way. All right? And then multi-axial are moving in three or more, three or more planes, basically like ball and socket joints like the shoulder. Okay, I've got flexion extension, abduction, adduction, internal, external rotation. Gliding movements are going to be where one bone is gliding across another. Okay, intercarpal joints and then intercarpal joints. So now then we talk about angular movement. And then what's where we talk about the angle of the joints. Why don't we uh, Take a break. But when you talk about uh, angular movements, bending, flexion is usually going to be anything that decreases the angle of the joint. So let's start if you're talking about our elbow. Extension would be opening up the joint, increasing the angle. Flexion is going to be decreasing the angle. Right? And then you also want to think of it in terms of anatomical position. And then you know, flexion, usually flexion is going to be anything that's going to put you into the fetal position. So flexion of the arm is like this, the head is like this. Okay. Where it gets tricky is on the, it's on the foot. Okay. So imagine if this is your foot. When you're in the fetal position, you've got to be like this. Right. So your toes are pointing. The other way to think of it is, is look at the toes, right? This is going to be flexing the toes. So this is flexion, this is extension. Right. And then, but also in certain areas we talk, we have special terms for it, where this is plantar flexion. So the palmar aspect, or the plantar aspect of the foot is going down like this, and then this is dorsiflexion. So let me, let me you talk about plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So technically, plantar flexion would be true flexion, and then dorsiflexion would be extension. Flexion and dorsiflexion. Flexion extent, okay. flexion and extension, what plane does that occur in? Sagittal plane. And then abduction, adduction, what plane does that can occur in? Frontal or frontal. Okay. Adduction going towards the midline of the body, abduction is going away. Right? And then circumduction would be like this. It's like a cone. Right? So this is the center point where it doesn't move from here, and then you're moving it around like that. That's going to be circumduction. And if you have this trail guide book, they have a lot of pictures in there of it too, of the Again, here's going to be gliding movements. Those are going to be at the carpal or plane joints. Okay, this one's up right side up. So flexion here, you're decreasing the angle. So it's going to be these types of movements, like that. Extension, think of this as the joint angle going back like that, or extension like this. Sometimes we use 
terms like hyperextension. In the general sense, in the, in the joints of the spine, when you're flexing forward like this, what you're usually doing is stretching and pulling on nerves. Like the spinal cord, if you're doing nerve retraction tests, you're doing things like this where you raise the leg and you pull back like this. And then when you bend backwards, what you're typically doing is compressing the joint structure. We call it the set joint of the spine. You have the set joints and the posterior part of the motor unit. When you're bending back like that, you're doing tests to examine the joints. So if somebody has a set joint problem, you can do tests like this, and you can bend their back, and you're pushing down on the head. Whereas if you're doing things like this, there's tests like this for like meningitis, or irritation of the spinal cord, or nerve root problems. And then again, here we have, so what movement is this here? Plantar flexion or, or flexion. And then dorsal the flexion is coming up like that. And then again, here's abduction. AD junction, that's a lot of times where you say to eliminate the confusion instead of saying abduction, abduction. Say AD junction or AB duction. And then rotation. What plane is that occurring? So rotation, everything like this. Now, we're talking about range of motion, meaning future of rotation, not value the joint, or the shoulder, or the hip joint. Okay? There is a little bit of rotation that occurs in the knee, but it only occurs when the knee's bent. You can't really rotate the knee like this. You have to have it up like this and then have a little bit of rotation. Like if you feel on your knee, if your knee's in a flex position like that, you palpate down here and look at the the tibia. Okay? And then you can rotate you've got to these two parts going forward and back. Okay, so you're below the femur, you feel these two parts come forward back and rotate. And then the other thing, you have rotation that occurs between the first and second vertebra. We have special movements in different areas. We talked about at the elbow, we have pronation, sicconation, this is pronation. Pronation is turning the palm up, pronation is palm down. Then in the foot, we talk about inversion and eversion here. So turning the, 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 the bottom of the foot inward is going to be inversion, turning it out is going to be eversion. Then we have protraction and retraction. So we're talking about with the jaw here, protraction or retraction. Same with the head, protraction and retraction. Okay, I think you're a little bit bad. Good job. Um, and then you have elevation and depression, right? So if you talk about shoulder elevation, shoulder depression. There's a lot of other different, more complicated movements with the scapula, and we'll talk about that more when we get into shoulder. Uh, and then opposition. Basically, that's putting the tips of the, or the, of the fingers together with the thumb. Opposition. Translation would be like a lateral movement. Like this is a protraction, reach, or kind of translation. Translation just moving forward in one plane. The lateral translation would be like, like this, where your head's level and you're just kind of going like that. Scapula and 